So this is classic autumn olive full of berries. You can see the berries grow very close to the branch. They don't grow out on the leaves. They grow in on the branch in bunches. It's very woody, almost like a tree. Branch in here. This is a solid inch in diameter branch. And uh, you can give it a little bit thicker than that way down at the base. So it's very high. That's probably the top of that is at least 12 feet high. And one really distinctive thing about the leaves, this is not autumn olive, and this is something that is very common in nature, which is leaves, they, they tend to grow in pairs like this. See how this, you have this stem and they go two out, two out, two out, two out, and then one at the top. And you know, if you find anything else, uh, you know, this is something else, not autumn olive, it's a vine growing on the ground. Same thing, two leaves, two leaves, two leaves. They're, they're growing out of this stem in pairs. That is repeated over and over and over again in nature. So if we look at uh, autumn olive, autumn olive does not do that. It doesn't grow in pairs. It goes one leaf on the left, one leaf on the right. One leaf on the left, go up a little bit, one leaf on the right. One leaf on the left, go up a little bit, one leaf on the right. So that's something very distinctive. You can see here on the, from the bottom, the, the, the leaves are staggered. So anyway, I think if you have these four criteria, you can be really sure that you have autumn olive. Location. It likes a lot of sun, so it likes to grow on the edge of a field where there are not too many trees to put it in shade. That's condition number one. Condition number two, if you, it's, it's a bush, but it's very woody. It grows between like a, but like a tree and a bush. So it's a very woody bush. It has this very thick, very thick branches, but very bushy. Number three, if you have this staggered leaf pattern, leaf left, leaf right, leaf left, leaf right. And then four, if you have these, this type of fruit, you know, if you recognize the fruit growing tight in on the branch, it has these little speckles all over it. It's a small red berry with these speckles all over it. So we're going to pick some of these berries, then go back to the house and make some fruit leather. So here's something you want to be careful of when you're picking wild fruit. So here, you know, here we've got some, some of this autumn olive. You know, it's got these berries on it. And kind of growing up through the bush, if we could move right over here, if you see, this is a totally different plant, but it's kind of growing up through. The leaves look similar. The berries look kind of similar, but these are not at all edible. And you know, especially if you have a kid or something that you're picking with, you really want to be careful because you could easily confuse those two. So I'm going to show you guys the size of this seed. This is already pretty small. And it has a seed in it that, that that's the seed that which I just ate the meat off. So, you know, very little fruit per berry, which is why it's almost a nuisance just to eat them like that, but they're really delicious when you put them in something. So there we go. We've got, I think that's probably about three cups in there. So let's head back to the house and make some fruit leather with it. Okay, so now we're gonna make our autumn olive berry fruit leather. So I took the berries that we found. I took just some of the debris out of them. We have about two cups here. So now we're just gonna process them. You know, like I said before, there is a pretty big seed and not a ton of fruit on each one. So they're really good, but they're kind of a nuisance to eat unless you just wanna eat the seeds. So it's better to process them and take the seeds out. So this process is really simple. I have about two cups. Uh, so we're gonna put it on the stove. We don't really wanna cook it, but there's this big seed in there. We just wanna get all the flesh, all the pulp off the seeds so that we can make the fruit leather. So we're gonna do that, just putting it on the stove. So I'm gonna put, these ratios will pretty much work out if you have more or less, you know, however, however much you pick. But for, it, for two cups, I'm going to put a quarter cup of water in there, turn the stove on, about a 
about a teaspoon of lemon juice. And then, wait for this to kind of get hot. Again, I don't want to cook this, I just want to get it hot in that, in that boiling just for a couple minutes and then I'll get that flesh off the seeds and I'll make it a lot, real, a lot easier to process. So, as this water just starts to boil, I'm just going to mash, 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 mash until I eventually get a pulp that's separated from the seed. And while we're waiting for this to uh, get all mashed up, these berries are very high in lycopene, which is, uh, I don't really know what it is, but it's kind of the new super ingredient that you're supposed to have in your, in your superfoods. It's supposed to be, you know, fights against cancer, it's good for your liver and all kinds of stuff. There's a lot of it in watermelon, but there's way more of it in the autumn berry. So this is getting pretty pulped up. One other thing I'm gonna add again, I have two cups of autumn berries. I started with two cups of these autumn berries. And so for two cups, I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of honey. That's just gonna help it get a nice leathery texture. So it's pretty much all pulped up here. You can see the seeds in there. So, the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna let this cool down for like, you know, you don't really need to let it cool down, but just so it doesn't burn me, I'm gonna just let it cool down for a minute or so, so it's not totally scalding. Then, I'm gonna run it through this mill. It's gonna take all the seeds out and let all the pulp through. And I'm actually gonna do it right onto this. I have just a baking sheet with some wax paper on it. And I'm actually gonna run it right onto there. Put it in here. Scrape what's off the bottom off here. So now we're basically done. I'm just going to spread this out a little bit until it's maybe an eighth of an inch thick everywhere. So this is our pulp for our fruit leather. And now this you're just going to dehydrate. So if you have an actual dehydrator, you can use a dehydrator. We don't have a dehydrator. So we're just going to put it in the oven at the lowest setting. So this oven is 170 degrees. So at that temperature, it will take about eight hours to, to get totally dry. So it's heating up. So I'll see you in eight hours. All right, so it's only been actually about four hours, but I spread, ended up spreading this thinner than I have before, so it, it dried up quicker than before. So anyway, it's done. So now we just separate it off the paper. Daddy, what is this? This is that fruit. Remember the fruit leather that you had when we were... Yeah, Daddy. Hmm? You Dad. remember it? Yeah. Was it good? And there we go. 
So I'm just going to cut it up into little portions. I like to I cut it up into little rectangles, and then you can just put it between wax paper or whatever. Can I? Until you're ready to eat it. So there it is. You want a piece, Ina? Yeah. Easy. say it's good. Mm.